there, Shakers and Groovers. How are you doing today? I wanted to touch on uh, some news, two bits of news that have come out in the last week or so. The first bit of news is the A7R 3 and why I think that's a great thing. Second bit of news, Nikon Brazil. What's that all about? I just wanted to share my thoughts on what I think that's all about. So, let's talk about the A7R 3 I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the Sony. I'm a fan of the A7R. I actually uh, purchased the original A7R when it came out. And I'll talk about why I did that a little bit later. So why is this so good? It's good because it means now that there's a choice for everybody in this sort of category. The category of high megapixels, high dynamic range cameras. Well, not quite so much with the Canon. Sorry, Canon, but it's true. But if you're a Canon user, if you're a Nikon user, if you're a Sony user, you've now got a full frame, high megapixel, great quality camera that can service your needs. Canon's obviously got the highest megapixels at 50, Nikon at 45, Sony at 42, but then Canon has the lowest dynamic range and it is the slowest. But still, if you're a Canon user and you've invested in all of that glass, you can actually put that onto the Sony and get great results from it. So this is great news. We all have a great camera that we can choose to use. We can all jump into a system that works for us. And this is why I want to talk about more so the Sony and the Nikon and how it just doesn't matter that there's the two in the market. The Nikon is more of a camera that you use when you've got to do things quickly and you've got to make things happen fast. It's a larger camera, the ergonomics are easier, faster, and it feels better in your hand over longer periods of time. But it is larger and that has its issues. I would say, conversely, the A7R 3 is great if you're, say, a streetscape photographer or you're a tourist traveling and you want the highest quality camera that you can get your hands on with the best dynamic range that you can get your hands on, but you also want the smallest, lightest form factor. Now, both cameras will fit into either place. You can, of course, use the Nikon D850 for travel and street photography, but it's bigger and heavier. And of course, you can use the Sony for uh, and have it in your hand all day long and try and work with those ergonomics as fast as possible. And of course, if that's the only camera you had, you could make it work. But because I own an A7R and because I own the Nikon, uh, I can tell you that the ergonomics of the Nikon are better, but uh, the size and weight of the Sony is better. So this is fantastic news. If you're a new photographer, you can go in either direction, whichever one suits your life, your skills, your needs. Yeah, and if you're a pro shooter and you really want all the lenses that Nikon can provide, the specialty lenses, the tilt shifts, the super long zooms, the, all the different macros and all that sort of thing, well then Nikon's clearly the go for you. But if you're happy to get into this newer Sony ecosystem where the lenses are growing quite rapidly, and they are very, very good lenses, then also that can be the choice that you want to make. So yes, Sony and Nikon used to be closer when the D810 and the A7R came out, they actually shared the same sensor. And one of the main reasons, there was, there was two main reasons that I didn't sort of end up embracing the, uh, the Sony for my workhorse camera at that point in time. The first one was being the ergonomics. I mean, besides the lack of lenses, there weren't very many back then. There might have been like four or six or maybe less. I, you know what? I don't even think the 24 to 70 had come out when I bought it. Hadn't happened yet. But that didn't bother me because I could put my Nikon lenses on it and have a play. That wasn't the reason. The number one reason was the, uh, the ergonomics. The number two reason is I really didn't like um, an electronic viewfinder. I absolutely love seeing the real world through an, a single lens reflex. I just, I just it's, it's just magic for me. Um, so th so they're the main, they were the main two reasons. And because I can be shooting all day long 
eight hours, 10 hours. Photography is my life. That's what I do. Uh, comfort and uh, comfort. So holding it in your hand, super important. And of course, what you see, you know, what I see is, is actually everything about what a photographer does. Uh, and I still prefer even today the, the, uh, the single lens reflex because you're actually seeing the real world over the electronic viewfinder. I'm sure there'll be a time any, anytime soon where that's going to change. Um, but I didn't like things like the shutter lag. You know, you take a photo and then it would appear in the viewfinder. Whereas I prefer if I take a photo and I want to look at it, then I'll, I'll go and look after, afterwards. But I don't want it to appear on my eye. Probably could have turned that off. Anyway, it was the ergonomics. The ergonomics was the main thing, and I don't, I don't like a digital viewfinder. Um, and of course, they did a very strange thing. They must have cut some sort of deal with Nikon, I reckon. They did a strange thing where they compressed their RAW files and threw away some of the information in the original A7R. And so at the end of the day, it actually made it unusable for my professional work because I just didn't have access to the full dynamic range that the sensor was capable of. Of course, they addressed that with the A7R 2 and a firmware update a couple of years later. Uh, but I decided not to jump into the A7R 2 because the Australian dollar shifted so much that the camera went from costing about two and a half thousand dollars to costing like four thousand two hundred dollars and uh, there wasn't enough in it for me at that time. But, but with the a7R 3 and now Sony has a much longer track record in this space, with a growing list of lenses, I do feel that uh, it's, it's a fantastic option from, the, uh, from those three full frame camera manufacturers, Sony, Nikon Canon and um, yeah if I was a streetscape photographer and if I was a uh, traveling and I wanted to get the very best pictures possible I think I think I might choose that camera but if I'm a semi pro or a pro and I want the best ergonomics and all the other things that the, the massive range of lenses and all that sort of stuff I'd st I'm still 100% excited about the D850, and I love the camera and the way and I, the way it feels in my hand. Personally, personally, I would not use the A7R3 for work, just because of, of of the size. It's literally just too small in my hand. So anyhow, great news. I think it's just great news that both of these cameras are in the market. I think it's uh, it's just giving more options for consumers, and I think it's giving great options for consumers. Um, and I think that, you know, all of these camera companies can survive even with all of these multiple options going on. So bravo for the a7R 3 bravo that it's got a similar quality and size sensor, similar dynamic range. So it makes it easy. If you want to go Nikon or Sony, you can't really go wrong in the, uh, in the hobbyist and semi-pro space. I really think you can't go wrong with either of them. You're going to just be blown away, blown away. Now, I just wanted to quickly touch on the Brazil, Nikon Brazil thing. The fact that um, Nikon are closing their, their retail. They're not they're going to stop retailing to Brazil. Now, I've read that the main reason this is happening is due to the grey market. And we have exactly the same problem here in Australia. That there's a lot of grey market options. And because of exchange rates and so on, things can be, you know, reasonably cheaper. Um, I don't do grey market because I like a warranty uh, and I like being part of the Nikon ecosystem and I'm also a member of the Nikon Professional Services which you don't get access to that if you don't buy the stuff here in Australia. So I don't think grey market's going to kill off Nikon here in Australia but, I, but, but, but what I read is in, in Brazil all the retailers were, were grey market. It's simply not a viable economic option if people are illegally importing product into a country, not paying import taxes, perhaps not even paying their, their local taxes and just selling direct. Comes in via a suitcase and the government misses out on their taxes and Nikon miss out 
on their margin in order to support shops and do all the stuff that they need. So it's just simply not financially possible if people are buying through grey market. So have a bit of a think. Have a bit of a think about in your country, if you choose to buy grey market, what that actually means ultimately to that camera company in your country. Because obviously some of the sale is going back to Nikon in, uh, in, in usually I suppose they're coming from Asian countries. Uh, so it does go back to Nikon in that region, but it makes it very hard for them to support the company in the region that you're buying on the gray market. So have a think about that when you buy stuff. I know we all got to watch our dollars, but got to think big picture and you got to think long term. So that's the grey market. I don't use it. There's warranty things as well. I've, I'm pretty sure I saw on a box in an unpacking video that uh, Nikon provide a five year warranty in the United States. Whereas here we only get two years. So hey Nikon, can we have five years too? If we buy local, I think that would be lovely. And your stuff's so good, no one hardly ever makes a claim. I reckon I've used my Nikon warranty maybe three times and I've probably bought about 50 things. So, um, you know, over the course of 20 years. So it doesn't happen very often. Anyhow, thank you everybody so much for watching. As always, I love your questions. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. I'm always making new videos every week, sometimes more often, sometimes less often. And uh, hit the bell, of course. We love it when you hit the bell. Share even. And uh, the most important thing for me is keep on clicking and I will see you next time. Take it easy.